Well, hello everyone and welcome to a very special edition of Chad Knows. Now, some of you guys know me, some of you don't. The Chad Knows YouTube channel and the drchadpeters.com page kind of started out a couple years ago with a podcast I was doing called Be Awesome 365. And I just got kind of where I thought that one was going more away from where my strong suit was. My strong suit is health, it's fitness, it's uh, how to be a doctor, that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, man, when I'm getting out here into different things that I'm sure I'm not a super pro at. And so I wanted to kind of wrap it back. But as you may have noticed, the world has changed and it's changed a lot in the last couple of weeks. And just like the world, I am really ready to change too. And, and we're ready to evolve and adapt. And I think if there's something that I can do on this channel and it has a chance to reach some people, then I want it to. So today's lesson is gonna be non-school lessons that you can and should teach your kids during a stay-at-home situation because we're all stuck in this stuff. So let me do what I do best. I should like to share information, I like to share ideas, and I'm just trying to kind of become your muse. Maybe you'll get a couple things out of here where you can say, hey, that is something I wanna do and that is the direction I wanna go. That's what I'm trying to do, guys, sharing ideas. And I hope it takes off because just like you, I've been forced into the world of doing things online and I really could use something to do online. So I hope it works out. If you like this stuff, make sure you get in with some of my other information and see if there's anything I can do. It's new, it's early for me. If there's anything you guys would like to go over, just let me know and we'll do it. Anyway, let's get to it. The first thing I would tell you is there is no replacement for teachers or school. Like you guys have been in there. Do you remember the first time that you took your first grader to school and you sat around and you're like, oh my God, how do these kids listen to this teacher? I mean, I remember the first time I saw my girl and she goes like this, the teacher does this and all the kids run to their desk and they sat down. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, this, this would never ever happen in my family. And that's right. These, these teachers are absolute experts. They are friends to your kids and they have a relationship that you cannot match, right? We cannot be experts for our kids when we're parents. They've seen us in our underwear. That's one of my podcasts I did early and it's a real one. Go back to it if you want to learn more but there is no way you'll be able to reproduce it. So don't think you can and don't have the pressure of doing that. Your teachers are still there to help you anyway. There's also social factors that your kids are missing that cannot be replaced. Ask your kids what is hurting them right now and if they're open and honest with you, they're gonna tell you they miss their friends. They miss their friends because they have to stay at home all the time and that's not our choice. There's nothing we can do about it so it's time to just kind of move on and get to the next thing and help your kids out. Just because we have no more, no more school and no more after school activities doesn't mean it can be lost time, however. You shouldn't just be okay with your kids sitting at home playing Fortnite for eight hours a night or just sitting on YouTube watching videos of slime all the time. It's time to move on to the next thing. We have time. We've been given this gift that we've asked for forever. So do the stuff you always said you would do man, if I had a little more time, I'd like to get into this. I know I have pressure with my kids on, hey, there's these life skills that I want to teach my kids, but we're not getting home till nine o'clock. Well, we don't have football and soccer after school anymore, guys. We don't even have school. What we do is have time and we have a lot of time as a family. So let's do what you do best, be the parents. So that whole idea with this one is to give you some ideas on things that are life lessons that your kids should need to go over. Now, Depending on age, it may be different. There may be some things you don't want to talk to about your kids based on age stuff. But again, it's just to give you guys some ideas. So one of the first things I would say that would come up would be money lessons. Now, this is a tough one and it's hard. And I think a lot of kids just kind of get this passively. But the world is different than the world I grew up in. And not to make myself super aged, but my son, my sixth grade son just had his birthday about a month ago. And he got like 250 bucks from his friends. 250 bucks for having a birthday is not something we would have gotten my day. And it's just, it's really hard for them to get a value of money, right? Last Christmas, your kids wanted Yeezys just like my kids did. These are $385 shoes. You know why they ask for that? Because they have no idea how much money that is. If you work at McDonald's and you're making 12 bucks an hour and your kid asks for $385 shoes, you're talking about a week of work. So your kids need to see this a little bit because they don't really get how that is. And you can give them an allowance and you can give them some money and you can have them work with it. But, but the lifestyle that they're living for the most part, it's not the same as what we were. And it's really hard to teach these money lessons. So make sure you've got some ideas on how you want to do it, right? If, you, if I went and asked my kids, hey, I'll give you five bucks if you go and mow the yard, 
they're, they're not doing it, man. Like why on earth would they do something for $5 when the kid gets 200 and some dollars just for having a birthday? So you're going to have to work hard on some money lessons and let them figure out what, what it's really all about. And I'm not going to tell you how to do that. That's, that's not this part of it. This is for me to tell you, this is something you need to talk about with your kids. The next one I want to go over is commodities. And this is really cool because this is what I did with my son this morning. My youngest one loves to recycle. He lives for trash and recycling and he collects cans and the entire neighborhood brings cans over. And just like we have a few times in the past, we took our cans to the recycle center this morning. Now Hope is really cool and she took us through the whole thing and then he got his money and he noticed it was significantly less than what it was before. So first we had to figure out what's the price of aluminum and how this goes down because aluminum right now is 30 cents a pound where it was 45 cents a pound. And and my, even my, my first grader noticed this, but he's also got a cool idea because he wants to take the money that he got from the aluminum and he doesn't want it as cash. He'll take the cash, but now he wants to go to one of my other friends and he wants to turn it into silver coins or gold coins or something like that. And at $75 for a gram of silver, he's going to realize really fast how different metals have different values. And I think it's a great commodities lesson that kids could use. My friends were very excited to help him on this process and how it all worked. And I think you guys have friends out there that can do it too. There's a lot of different ways to learn about stocks and trades and stuff like that without actually having to go through it. And it's a really neat process. And I think my son got something that he could not get in a school setting. He's got aluminum in his hand that turns into cash in his hand and then turn into a silver coin in his hand and a pickup, a pickup load full of tin of aluminum cans end up being one silver coin that says something. And it's neat for him to be able to see that. This one I like to call grandma skills. Now it doesn't have to be a grandma that does it, but it's what I like to think of that grandmas are like exceptionally good at things like gardening, canning, I'm a 40 some year old man. I don't know how to can. I'm very interested in it though. And I want to learn how to do it. And it's not that I think the apocalypse is coming around the corner and we need to do this stuff for storage stuff. It's because it's a life skill that we should have. And if you have this skill, why not teach this to your kids right now? Cause they are not taking quilting classes and sewing classes in school anymore. In fact, take it even farther than baking and that kind of stuff and get into auto mechanics. You want to know what I'm terrible at? auto mechanics. It's science fiction to me. I can tell you down to the cellular level, everything that happens in the human body with any process. I, I can't figure out how a combustion engine works. It's science fiction, man. You can't take air and a little bit of gas and turn it into movement down the road. It's crazy. If you have these skills or one of your friends has these skills that you can go next to in less than a crowd of 10, learn these skills. This is the time for it. And it doesn't have to be an academic setting. This can be fun for them to get. So try this stuff out. The sex ed talk. This is the real one, man. And when I started thinking, this is how this entire lecture came to be. My son is at that age that he does need this talk. And I talked to him a couple months ago and I said, hey man, I think it's about time we have this, this sex talk. You know, are you ready for it? Yeah, dad, I'm, I'm okay. But can we just wait a little bit? I'm just not ready for it right now. Okay, fine. Well, guess what? Now we've got time. Both of us would probably do really good having this talk. And there's a couple things to think about because I had one of my, one of my dads that was in the office the other day, I asked him, have you had this talk with your son? And he said, well, my son's a seventh grader. And I told him, yeah, babies come from eggs. And that to me is horrible parenting, horrible parenting. That's not okay. This is time for us to man up, woman up, whatever it takes and teach our kids what we want them to know about sex ed. This isn't something you should rely on for someone else to teach you with in the first place. My first sex ed talk, I think was in fourth grade and it was with my principal and I'm sure he did a good job, but I didn't get much out of it. And I also don't think that's the kind of, that's not who I want teaching my kids. I want to teach my kids about the things that I think are important and let's get real. Sex is a huge important thing in all of our lives and it should be expressed the right way to our kids. And if it's not you, it's going to be taught by your kid's classmate that has older brothers and older sisters. That's who's teaching them. And that's who they're asking. So make it real. Think about this. This isn't one that you just walk up to your kid, put your arm around the shoulder and say, hey, bud, it's time to have a talk. You need to put some thought into what is important morals for you, the things that you think are important and that are age appropriate. Map skills and navigation. Whew, as long as it's not sex ed, we can do it, right? Well, 
How many of your kids know how to use a map? Because these kids didn't grow up with maps. They grew up with GPS and their phone has got an awesome version of it. But I've also been in the car with one of my uncles and he drove around a parking lot for about 16 minutes because he couldn't figure out how to get in the parking lot because his GPS didn't tell him. So there is an important skill to be learned with paper maps. It's super fun. Now, let me tell you how I taught my kids or what we did this weekend is we created a great big treasure hunt on my entire block. And, and I had them where they had to use a compass. They had to use some navigational direction. Some of the clues that they had, they would have to use an actual hand-drawn map or a made-up map. Another really cool way to do this is to have your kids sit down and say, draw, uh, draw me your neighborhood." right? So they should be able to at least know where all the houses are. Some of them may really know their stuff <clears throat> well if they're outside a lot. They might know where every single tree is. They might know who has what animals, but have them take an aerial view. Could they draw a map of their life and see where it's at? This is a skill that they need to have, and it's just a great way to kind of get their brain turned on either way. And that's fun. This isn't schoolwork for them. It's just a life skill they need to have. Teach them about your job. It doesn't matter if you're like me, and you're a chiropractor and a sports guy. Yeah, I know about anatomy and physiology. And we were watching the, the Ellen DeGeneres show the other day, the game of games. And the, the, one of the questions was, name a bone south of the navel. And, and the guy, the adult on the show, couldn't name one. Couldn't name one. He said the knee bone. Like the old song, right? The knee bone's connected to the thigh bone. Like, guys, we can do better than this. If, if, if that's my profession... I can teach this really well. Now, if it's not your profession, who cares? But your kids are interested in engineering. They're interested in welding. They're interested in what you do. If you're a teacher, they are interested in that. My parents were teachers. My wife's parents were teachers. I didn't know what it was. My mom taught third grade. I remember telling her that's gotta be a super easy job until I took it as a major for two semesters in school. I'm like, you gotta be out of your mind. I'm not doing this for a job. So teach your kids about what you do. If you are going to hire your future kid, what would you want them to know that most of the kids coming out of school right now that apply for your job don't know? This is the time to have fun conversations about what you do and what you know. Personal safety and awareness. Now, I think this has got much bigger over the last couple of weeks and, and rightly so, but for the rest of us, especially us that are down here in Texas, this is a pretty big deal for a lot of us. And as you guys know, this was like the biggest week in the history of the planet for gun sales. People are scared. And when they're scared, they do goofy things. Now, I don't think the apocalypse is coming. This wasn't an EMP blast and we're not going to be knocked back to the Stone Ages. But I agree with my man, Andy Murphy from the Secure Dad. This is a feed I have here for you. There is going to be some civil unrest with these things. Now, I'm really happy with how our country is handling everything right now. I think it's an appropriate response, whether you think it's overkill or not. This is a good wake-up call for a country. I think we're doing good. But there are going to be some pockets and areas of certain towns that are going to see some stuff. And your kids should know this. Now, I'm much like uh, Mr. Murphy here on his podcast. And I, I have kind of we've done this as game since my kids were little. We drive into uh, town and I'll tell them, hey, see, see who can find the most Mustangs. And so let's just start getting aware of our surroundings and it's really paid off. If you want some tips and tricks, I'm not going to get big into this, but all you guys should know this stuff. There's no one better than this on the planet than Andy Murphy at the secure dad. I think it's one of the best things, his podcast and his website and his, uh, his book, you really can't beat it. It's important. And all you guys should know it. And if you guys are parents, and you're like, I don't really have any awareness myself either. If you haven't heard of the code yellow code, white code, origin code, red, you guys need this yourself. If you're a busy mom that has four or five kids and you have walked out of the grocery store before with four kids running around through the parking lot and you're on your cell phone, you need this. You need this even more than your kids do. So look up his stuff and start to get into it. If you guys have more questions about this, I'm happy to turn my YouTube channel into some awareness stuff too. YouTube lessons. Yep. Get your kids on YouTube. Not really. Really? Here's the thing, man. They're already on YouTube anyway. That's what they want to be on. There are some fantastic things out there. So the picture I have on your screen right now is the Battle of Medina. The Battle of Medina was a big thing for Texas, right? It's this, this, this huge battle that happened in Texas. They still really don't know what it is. To go over the Battle of Medina in a classroom setting with 24 kids, I would say would take about a week. There is some incredible stuff on YouTube, and my kids all call it accelerated learning. 
You can get on there. You can learn. They've got pictures. They've got videos. They've got people that are production wizards way better than what I'm giving you right now. And it's out there. There is so many things to learn that you can get on it. If I have a pump that goes out at my house for a well, I get on YouTube and it tells me how to do it in eight or nine minutes. The owner's manual is 5,000 pages thick. Use YouTube for what it should be. Accelerated learning. Give your kids some lessons in the media that they already love and master. It's out there. Use it. Other resources. Go outside. Have your kids go outside. Do it like your parents did. Everybody outside for 30 minutes and just let them go. Watching a bug crawl around is exceptional science for those kids. Seeing how water drains down or goes out of a faucet or goes out of a hose. There's just so much cool stuff that kids can do outside. So let them go outside and learn about their environment. It's, it's important. And in this time of we're trying to fight a worldwide pandemic with a virus, vitamin D, fresh air, being outside is very, very good for them anyway. That's going to boost their immune system. So get those kids out there and let them learn on their own, at their own pace, doing things that you wish they could do while they're at school. Things have changed and we're going to change with it. There's an old style in the picture I have here is these Foxfire books. If you guys haven't heard of Foxfire books, they're pretty cool. This is not our grandparents' book. This is our grandparents' grandparents' book. These are guys that were super old school. They built houses without tools. They made butter in a butter churn. They could take and make timbers out of wood that they felled themselves and sugar out of sugar cane. It's, 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 kind, of, it's kind of big in the prepper's world, but there's just some really cool stories in here. And for nothing else, your kids get to see what it was like in a different generation. It's very, very turn of the 1900s and just a really cool compiled series. If you've never seen those before, order one of those things and check them out. It's really, really cool. Like I said, YouTube stuff. How about asking your neighbors for things? Now, I know we need to do some social distancing and we have a stay at home mandate, but if your neighbor's not sick and you can do the proper vetting, you can see. And if they have a skill that you don't have, it's neat for your kids to learn from there and it's what neighborhoods are all about. So get to know some of these people. Ask your granny. Give her a call. Hey, Granny, I want to learn about this. What do you know about this? Granny, I want to learn about the Vietnam War. I wasn't one there for that. Tell me what that was like to be a kid while that was going on or what that was like to be an adult or what that was like to actually be in the war. Make history come alive. You've got resources for this. And then also just, just get on FaceTime. Get on your video chat. Start to talk to your friends, your cousins, your family that live in different states, in different parts of the world. See what they're going through because we're all going through this a little bit differently and it's all in a different timeline. And one of the things that really helped me was when I called one of my buddies that was stuck in Spain and I said, Hey, we really have, we're in South Texas. We haven't really got this yet. We don't even have a case down here at the time. And he said, Oh man, it's coming. Wait till you see what this is like. And he turned his phone around and just panned outside. And it was very eye opening to me. It's not the stuff you get on CNN. It's not scary. It's just, it's just ways to learn. Let's use our planet for what it is. And let's use the modern technology for what it is. Anyway, guys, just trying to give you some advice on that stuff. What are some things that should be taught by parents? And this kind of goes back to the sex ed idea, right? There are some things that we shouldn't have to rely on on our teachers to teach our kids. This isn't like, like daycare drop off, turn my kid into a young adult. Your kids are watching you. They're seeing how you act. And many of their mannerisms and many of their things that they like and dislike are going to be based on their experiences with you. This is time to get with your kids. And I know they don't listen to you all the time. They don't listen to me. We're not experts for our kids. And they don't behave like they do in the classroom. And that's okay. It's just a part of being parents. And we all are going through the same thing. So get to be with them and do it. Also realize it's not going to act like a classroom setting. You cannot set your kids down for four hours and say, hey guys, we're doing school. Now, if you've been doing homeschool at your own for the last five or six years, not public school systems, you may be better at this than most. If you're like us, you're just like, dude, this ain't working. I absolutely lost my mind yesterday morning because of this exact same thing. And, and a lot of these lessons you're going to teach only take minutes anyway. It might be that's just one of those ah, an aha moment and they get it, which is what happened with me with the aluminum to money to silver today. My kid just got it. It took a second. There's nowhere, no reason to harp on this for 30 minutes. Our kids are always learning from us. They're always watching. They're always paying attention. 
So direct this positively. This is not the time to get scared. This is not the time to tell them to shut up and just go play on their games. Let's get involved with our families more. The pandemic for our planet is a major change. It's changed everybody. It's worldwide. This isn't isolated to you. You're not the only one stressing this thing. So let's balance out the bad and the scary with a lot of good. We're the ones that should be doing this. Guys, I hope you liked it. It's a different version of how I do it than I normally do, but I think it should be a lot of fun and I hope you got something out of it. Take care, guys.